What's good with YouTube? Y'all already know Big Flocker with a convicts reaction where we smash, dash, and react. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel, and hit the bell notification for future fire reactions. Now, as you see, I'm doing a reaction to Dubs, right? Warfare with North Daniels, who had it, who had it the hardest. His last two videos, man, um, the one he just discussed Pelican Bay, what happened up there with the Bulldogs and North Daniels. Um, that's 100% facts, you know. Uh, I don't know who he was talking about. He was talking about Asha Lee. Asha Lee was out there in the Bay when, when all that happened, when they told him to put on the shir shirts. Um, and that triggered a reaction to where everybody ended up getting off. 100% on that story, okay. The Bulldog situation, um, I heard the same thing about that as well. But let's get into his latest video, though, where he's talking about, you know, the, the warfare with Northerners different than with Blacks and whatnot. And I get one point where he says, okay, a Southern, a Sureño, right? Someone who's in the mix that's fallen under one of these legends, right? Not everybody on these yards with the Sureños have the numbers are involved as deeply. If they're in the mix on that level, yeah, they have, they have it the hardest. And I do agree upon that politically because of all the shiesty shit that happens from, you know, this member to this dude. Who gets the backlash from it? A lot of times, those that are working under that dude, okay? Um, that's real talk. It's hard. Their, their politics on that level are not supposed to have any type of politics, but they do. So in that aspect, they have it harder. Right? You know what I mean? I do agree with him 100%. He's spinning facts because it's like with the Northerners. They have one type of chain of command authority and whatnot, and it trickles down. It's coming from one headquarters. Therefore, you, you're not supposed to have these political issues on the yard. And if someone's being a detriment on, on functions, right, then eventually he's going to get dealt with. With the Southsiders, you may have this dude who has favors from this individual, for, and then this group has it from this individual, and it's all basically a fucking political game where you end up. Who's going who's gonna to favor you what you're doing? Therefore, you always have to be on your toes because you never know if you're going to get hit for something that you didn't even do wrong. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so in that aspect... Now, number-wise, yeah, the Southsiders always had the numbers. There was very few joints that we had the numbers on them. I think DVI, Solano, and San Quentin, right? Then we had a couple yards where we had it more established, right? But mostly the, the Southerners had yards everywhere, and they did what they wanted to do on those yards for the most part. And if any of that doing what they wanted to do on those yards tried to uh, inflict upon us demands, that's where the conflicts would always arise, now, and as far as the riots, right, when he says that how everybody used to maneuver, the same way that they maneuvered, let's look at the dude who we think is about, has this status or this authority, we did the same thing. And because we have less numbers, right, when we would try to wage war, if it was a, a yard that we felt we could turn over, we would send, we would send basically about three or four people with pieces, maybe up to five, right, and have our targets. Now you know that's going to trigger a melee. So we would have a group of five come right behind. And maybe even another five right behind as bombers. Okay. Because you know if you're hitting. Uh, when you hit them. They're not all going to jump like that. Like he said. Um, you're trying to remove the numbers that they have. And lower their numbers to up your numbers. So they would never want to send everyone at the Northerners. It wouldn't be to their advantage. So if there's 20 Northerners. There's 150 Sordanos. They're going to send anywhere from 30 to 50 to rush the homeboys, you know, and they have that luxury to do so. So that's where, the, you know, like I said, he did a good video. I agree with a lot of shit he said, like 100% of it almost, right? But I think there's different places, different times to where either side could have it harder based upon what's going on. You know, <laughs> it's kind of hard to say a, a yard where you're like you're 10 deep and there's 200 surveillance that you're not having it hard because... They don't want to give you this and don't want to give you that. And you have to fight for it. You know what I'm saying? See, a lot of this stuff that was going on in, in the system at that time in the 90s, right? With North Daniels started to have such low numbers on these yards. It wasn't SMY. It wasn't none of that. It was they built and created so many different prisons in like the last 10 years. They built, uh, what was it? They opened up Corcoran, Pelican Bay at that time. Then you had High Desert, Salinas Valley, New Corcoran, uh, Pleasant Valley, Avenal. From there, North Daniels got spread thin everywhere. 
during those times, like every yard would have sometimes 150 North Daniels, like 300 Southsiders back then. But once they started to fucking spread to more prisons, it spread everybody out. And it, we were kind of thin at almost every prison, except for places like Solano, San Quentin, Soledad, Susanville, we had a little bit still, and uh, Tracy. But at the same time, we could still be outnumbered in what would be normally our backyards. And the politics were different at that time, right? You know, um, on the level four, one eighty, the South South Siders program, like politically, like just like us, a little different in how they, in their beliefs, but the same way as far as security measures, getting off and plan of wars. The low, lower level threes, I didn't really see that from the South Siders. You know what I'm saying? I seen them more having the numbers, but still being a little bit more disorganized. And, you know, at that time, on both sides, there was dudes that were fucking out there that were hiding, that were not supposed to be out there on those yards, that were running those yards. So, therefore, of course, you're going to have all the chaos. Unfortunate thing is, most Southsiders really didn't have no issues with North Daniels. They just wanted to do their time, whatever they whatever they were doing, get high, get their hustle on. But there was always those that wanted to have animosity or have issues. And that's where a lot of the conflict arrives. Like he said, like, you know, hey, you guys have to put on your shirts. You guys have to cut your Mongolians. All that did when any time you had individuals that went rogue or those that decided to do that was give life to the propaganda that was being put out there about the Sudanians doing the bidding that they were trying to oppress North Daniels on any yard that they landed on. Now, the things that Dubs talks about, the head counts and the security and whatnot, we had to do that because not only did we have to worry about having issues with the Southsiders, right? the whites were also a group that we had to reckon with on these yards and see the whites and southerners did get along better up north right as far as in northern prisons because the numbers gains changes when you go up north right a little bit you have more northerners and whatnot but he's right um as far as the south siders and uh whites they've always had a loose alliance depending on where they're at but in the 90s and 2000s they were going at it harder on certain yards, level four yards, than any other other group for a minute. I mean, there was a get out there on some of these lines, high desert and whatnot. And it was a little bit different. So, yeah, I, get, I, I agree with him on that. The whole that just because they're white that they're in full alliance and compliance. No, that's all on an individual level of depending on who's there and who you're dealing with. That's the same attitude the North Daniels had with the blacks same type of attitude bear in mind it was a little bit different on the other yards level threes and whatnot in different locations and level twos you know i went to a place where they told me i had to cut my fucking hair and i ended up getting off catching a battery then i caught another battery in the hole they put me in the last cell and i'd have to walk down every day being called a buster or farmer having piss and spit and all this urine fucking tried to be thrown at me off to the door you know so uh on level four 180 that wouldn't happen level three a little bit different so like I said, there's different layers to, you know, what he's talking about. But there's a lot of accurate information he, he's being real about, you know. Um, and just like Dub said, it wasn't nothing personal. It was all business, man. You know, and it would change when you'd get back in the shoe and, and whatnot and you're next to a South Sider and you're talking in the event, man, or playing a chess game or even drinking alcohol like, like I did, you know. You start to not, not see them in the same light as you've been told. But then there's always those idiots that create unnecessary problems and do stupid shit that makes you start to look at them. There's some dudes that just hated Northerners straight up. Some dudes just hated Southsiders. They were on those yards. A lot of shit happened. You know, but at the end of the day, a lot of times it was nothing personal. It was just only business. And like I said, you know, I agree with them. Sometimes the Southern Rasa, in my eyes, the ones that are playing the politics, you know what I mean, are working under one of the legends, right, as he calls them. They may have have a little bit harder than anybody else because there's a lot of expectations there and there's a lot of dirty fucking shit that happens. Northerners, it may be a little different because at that time, we were outnumbered. We relied upon each other in unity. So if we had 20, 30 strong, we felt we had something going on. You know what I'm saying? And so we did what we had to do on these yards. You know, and all the politics and all the bullshit didn't really come into our circles. But later on, when you run a yard where there was mostly a lot of active homeboys... That's when the politics would surface. That's when all the bullshit would happen, when the, when the North had their own numbers. So having numbers at times, it leads to sometimes even more problems, man, more headaches. But then again, it also awards, you know, on their side, I used to see a lot of Southsiders that were doing time that just wanted to do their time. And 
they wouldn't get involved in the mix. They wouldn't be in, in their little circles or over there discussing stuff. They would just go about their business and day. And that was the one thing that was fortunate back then for the South Stars that didn't really want to get involved. If you run a level four 180, you're getting involved. Everybody is from the level three and level two. Because at that time, it was okay to go to those yards. As far as what he said about the, um, you know, them and the blacks, it's true. You know, one goes, they all go because it's a different type of atmosphere of, of a riot. You know, they're trying to fucking eliminate and just exterminate, you know what I'm saying, each other, you know. And so they would have to go. It's, it's a different type of uh, setting. The Rasa would be more strategic, like he said, you know. And we would do the same thing. Like I say, this, if we have the chance to overtake a yard, say if we have about 100 homeboys and there's maybe 60 Southsiders, we're going to send maybe, sacrifice maybe 15 so dollars to go try to rush and take out 40 of them. Then bam, next thing you know, we have 90 against 20. And then you hope that the next message that they bring is maybe more Northerners. That's how the games used to be played up, you know, politically. Now, there's places where we went where they just wanted to get us off the yard and they had the numbers to do so, you know, and... They didn't have to send everybody because if you send everybody, you lost a yard. It, it defeats the purpose. The only time the North would have everybody get involved is if it was a spur of the moment riot. Just, it just happens sometimes. You know what I mean? Whoever it was against. Or if you knew that what you needed to impose on that yard for your people was not within reach. Then let's fucking go. Let's, let's get our knives. Let's go handle some business. Let's go, let's go pluck some targets, man. And a lot of times that's what we did. You see? They kind of had the advantage at times knowing that we were going to attack just based upon the fact of how low our numbers were. And when you do acts like that, you know you got something coming. Um, sometimes with them, though, someone gets a hair in their ass. Hey, let's, let's just get these northerners off our yard. Like I said, it depends where you went. That was his truth, his experience. And I agree with mostly everything he said, man. But it's really hard to put label on who has it worse in the prison system, you know. Anyways, respects to Doves, man. I really enjoyed those last two videos, man. That's the type of content that I want to hear from him. You know, um, and not being afraid to speak his truth. Because sometimes I think people will not say how they feel because people will think that you're favoritizing your own group. You know what I'm saying? There's things I think that the North did a little bit different that was more elite than the South. And there's certain things the South did that was more felt elite or more advantages. Um you know, it depends on situations and circumstances, though, you know, and you can't be afraid to speak the truth about what you feel about your own group. And I think what he said, for the most part, was true. It was a good video. With that said, it's a convict's reaction. Flacco, I'm gone.